today the feast of uh, St. Hedwig. And we read only the Gospel of the Mass today. So we can go ahead and stand for the Gospel. We're going to be here again in Boston. And we have Gospel only we'll read. And the Gospel is taken from that according to St. Matthew, chapter 13. At that time, Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid in a field, which a man having found hid it, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a merchant seeking good pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went his way and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a, ne a, a net cast into the sea, and gathered together of all kinds of fishes, which when it was filled, they drew out. And the sitting by the, by the shore, they chose out of the, of the good out the good into vessels, but the bad they cast forth. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels will go out and shall separate the wicked from among the just, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They say to him, Yes. He said unto them, Therefore, every scribe uh, instructed, in the, in, in, instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man who is a householder, who bringeth forth out of his treasure new things and old. That's by the words of today's holy gospel. Mm -hmm. And then and the Father and Son of goes to men. So a few considerations on this Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 13. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure. In this chapter, St. Uh, Saint Matthew, our Lord Jesus Christ, tells about the kingdom of heaven and what it is like. And the kingdom of heaven is our Holy Roman Catholic Church. And it says, and our, and our holy faith. And it says, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a, tre a treasure hidden in a field, which a man, having found it, having found, hid it. And for, the, for joy he goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth the field. So the kingdom of heaven, when we first go to the church, we go as a little child, or we go as an adult, without the true faith. Without the faith. We go as a child or an adult, without the knowledge of God, without the love of God, and we only ask the priest, the priest asks the child, what do you ask the church of God? Faith. What does faith offer to you? Eternal life. If then thou wishes to keep the wishes to have life, keep the commandments. Believe in one God and keep the commandments. We have to understand that the first contact we have with the kingdom of heaven, we have to we have to give up something, and we have to go buy something. We have to give up something, and we have to go after something. So when we, with that, our Lord Jesus Christ allows us throughout life to have certain tests to see how much the kingdom of heaven is worth. Remember, in the very beginning, in the very beginning of time. God gave a test to Adam, and this is before the fall. He gave a test to the angels in heaven, and, and he gave a test to Adam and Eve. He gave them the test. How much is the kingdom of heaven worth to you? Are you willing to give up something of your will, something of your understanding, something of your being to buy it? The kingdom of heaven has to be bought. It has to be paid for. And one of the great tragedies Bishop Sheen pointed out about our modern world is that we're in a world that's a welfare state. We're now in a welfare state. And we believe that the things should be given to us for nothing. We receive everything for nothing. You don't have to work. Now people won't go to work anymore because they're getting their check from the government. And we don't have to work. We don't have to do things in order to get our pay. We don't have to do things in order to get the things that we need for life. And this mentality enters into our, into our souls. And we believe we no longer have to work out our salvation. In fact, that's the mentality that entered into the world 500 years ago when Martin Luther said that you can go to heaven without works and you don't have to buy heaven. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to give up something. Remember when, when the rich young man was asked by our Lord to become a disciple, when he was asked to become an apostle, two things happened. First of all, the Lord was filled with exceeding great love for that man. And it was the exceeding great love that asked God, made God's heart, our Lord Jesus Christ's heart, do two things. He said, go, get rid of those things that thou hast. 
because all the things that thou hast are tying you down. The things that thou ownest, they are tying you down and they are bringing your soul down. Get rid of those things that are bringing your soul down. Go sell all that thou hast, give it to the poor, and then come and follow me. But the gospel tells us, the apostles noted that he was filled with an exceeding great love for that man. And it was an exceeding great love that made him go after him. But what was the requirement of the rich young man? Remember, the rich young man was not in the state of mortal sin. The rich young man was living according to the law of God. The rich young man was a good man. But something was required of him. And what was he missing? He was missing a sacrifice. He was missing showing his love of God by giving up something and being willing to go after him to sell something that he owns, something of his heart, and go after him. And this is the beginning. Therefore, it says in the beginning, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure in a field. That's a treasure of sanctifying grace. The treasure of faith that we carry inside of our hearts. As you notice, at the very end of the world, there will be Catholics in the world. Catholics that are wicked, who do not have the treasure of sanctifying grace, and Catholics that are good, who do have the treasure of sanctifying grace. And the angels will come down from heaven on the final day, in the final parable. So the angels will come, and they will separate out the good from the bad. The angels are going to come, and they'll separate the wicked from the just. And they shall cast the wicked into the furnace of fire, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? We begin by getting a treasure. We then travel through life, and there have to be a few struggles. There have to be a few battles. There have to be few difficulties. And then at the end, who still has the treasure? Because remember, our Lord St. Paul warned that all the Jews went through the cloud, warned of the cloud, all the Jews passed through the sea, all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. But with most of them, God was not well pleased. And therefore, he let them die in the desert. And those that were, those that were chosen passed into the promised land, Joshua and Caleb. And those that did not were not faithful on that day, and did not repent of the sin of the golden calf. Those, those were that did not live for the desert. So right now in the tram of our church, in every age of our church, there's a crisis. There's some kind of crisis. We're in a great crisis now in our holy church. But in every age, there's some kind of crisis. And in every life, there's some kind of difficulty. There will never be one in which there isn't. And it's, it's the case of all the saints. They all had to experience crosses. They all had to experience difficulties. But well, why were these difficulties allowed in the lives of the saints? So that they might test, so God might show, let them show in their hearts, how much is the treasure that is hidden in the field? Take the treasure of faith and put it in your heart. Take the treasure of faith. Are you willing to sell what thou hast to get that treasure? Because when you sell what you have, it's a foolish thing to do unless you're going to get something better. That is why, for instance, the majority of souls who even come to God for a brief time they come to God for a brief time because they don't want to go to hell. They come to God for a brief time because they don't want to suffer. They don't want to burn. But this can never last. This feeling can never last. But those who go after Christ and go after him because they're going to get a greater value. They're going to get a greater treasure. They're going to get a greater happiness. They're going to have a greater gift that will last forever. These that recognize this, these can hold on in the time of crisis, in the time of difficulty. God allows us to experience difficulties. When we're experiencing difficulties, and when, that, when, when things are too bad, we get rid of the things we don't need first. We get rid of the superfluous and unnecessary things first. What is happening now, for instance, is that for many souls, Christ and the faith is that which is superfluous. But their job and their security and their own comfort is not superfluous. And so that God asks from time to time throughout the history of the world, what is the treasure that we're holding on to? That where a man's heart is, that's where his treasure is. Where a man's treasure is, that's where his heart is. The treasure and the heart are always connected one to another. And there is, and there is a, a great sorrow in, in souls when they see that their treasure is destroyed, or their treasure is taken away, their treasure is in the hands of another, or that which they love is being attacked. And in our world today, the most serious thing that's being attacked is the Holy Roman Catholic faith. The most serious attack is the one against God and his glory and his dignity. And the secondary attack is against man and his property. But the primary attack is against God. And right now there's a great movement throughout the world against the one world government. Stop world control. 
There's a great movement to stop world control, a great movement against the one world government. And what is this movement striving to achieve? It's striving to achieve independence from authorities, independence from control of others. It's striving to be able to continue in our own independent way of life so that I can have my own treasure and he can have his own treasure and she can have her own treasure and everyone can have their own treasures. But what are the treasures that they're after? They're after the treasure that the moth consumes, and this is the reality. So while on the one side, as the one world government becomes more powerful and more powerful right now, the answer of the majority of souls, including Catholic souls, is to stand up and say, we must fight for our rights. Whereas our ancestors stood up and fought for the rights of God. And we, we, must, we must fight for that which we need. To, to, we have the right to our own religion. We have the right to our own freedom. We got the right to our own property. We got the right to live peaceably in society amongst our neighbors. And just because we're religious, just because we're good people, we should not be persecuted because of that. We, we have the right to be free amongst other peoples. And these are the rights that we're after. These are the treasures the moth has consumed. Consider every one of those treasures. The time will come when you grow old and die. And when you die, you will no longer have your own house. You will no longer have your own health. When your, when your health collapses, you no longer have the freedom to walk. You won't have the freedom to go where you wish. People will have to carry you wherever you wish. You won't even have the freedom to eat. You're going to have to take food and pour it into your mouth. And so this freedom we are going to lose anyway. The freedom to our house, it's going to go to someone else. The freedom to our bank account, it's going to disappear. The freedom of our health, it's going to disappear. And many souls throughout the world are fighting for these freedoms. God gave us these freedoms to a certain extent, but he gave them to us as tools to know, love, and serve him. He gave them as tools to use to build the kingdom of Christ, and tools to use as weapons to fight for the kingdom of Christ and against that which is evil. And what is happening now is we are standing together or striving to stand together on common ground. And the common ground is we are all mortal, as JFK said. And the common ground is we breathe the same air. And the common ground is we all love our families. And the common ground is we all love our independence. And we all love our houses. And this is death. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, what kind of man is going to make it to the end? The one that finds the treasure. And the treasure is only one treasure. It is the treasure of the Holy Roman Catholic faith given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the only treasure. And we have to find that treasure. Then it says, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking good pearls, who when he has found the one girl pearl of great price, he went his way, sold all that he had and bought it. And the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net cast into the sea, and gathered together all kinds of fishes, which when it was filled, they drew out, and, sit, and, and, and sitting by, by the shore, they chose out the good into vessels, but the bad they cast forth. And so we're out to capture all souls in the net. That's why St. Augustine points out, in the very beginning, when that first miracle happened, St. Peter needed a second boat to load up the fishes. And the nets of the first boat loaded up so many fishes that the boat was about to sink. Then the second boat came over, and both boats were about to sink. Those are the fishes that Christ captured in the beginning. But at the very end, 15 days after the resurrection, St. Peter put out his net and caught 153 fishes. Exactly 153. The number of the elect is chosen by God. And those who refuse, many, many are caught by the first net, but, but the net breaks and they get out of the net. Many are caught by the first net, but they are not good fishes. And so those bad fishes caught by the first net, when the angels will come, they will be like the merchants that come. This fish is no good, cast him forth. That fish is no good, cast him forth. And so we must remember that we are in the kingdom of Christ in order to see God face to face, in order to be with God. And right now there's a test. And the test is not against our constitution. The test is not against our individual inalienable rights, as the constitution says. Our test is against God. And are we ready to stand for God? And are we ready to stand for the rights of God? And this, it, it, are the rights of God the rights that matter to us or not? And are these the great treasures? Many souls today are having to make a great decision. Which treasure matters? Is it the treasure of my own heart and my own comfort? 
or is it the treasure of the things of God? And so there will be the, the fishes are going to be cast forth that are no good. And then finally, the angels are going to come at the very end. And, he said, and, and, and the angels shall go out and shall separate the wicked from the just, and they shall cast them into the furnace of the fire, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have ye understood all these things? They said to him, Yes. He said to them, Therefore, every scribe instructed in the kingdom of heaven, as I do a man who is a householder, who bringeth forth out of his treasures new things and old. And so that oh, oh, the, the treasure is always the same. The treasures are Holy Roman faith. The treasure is the knowledge and love of God. And we're going to have little struggles from time to time and disappointments from time to time. But the other question is, what is it that disappoints us? What is it that worries our hearts? And this is one of the tests also. It says in rule number seven in the nation retreat in the second week that there is a test. Which angel comes quietly into our soul? And which angel makes noise coming into our soul? The angel that makes noise is the one that we're not familiar with. The one that comes quietly is the one that we are familiar with. There's a good angel t talking to us, and there's a bad angel talking to us. And we're experiencing sorrows, and we're experiencing struggles, and we're experiencing difficulties at every level today. We're having spiritual struggles because we can't go to Mass like we would like to. We're having struggles we can't get the sacraments like we would like to. We're having physical struggles. We, can't, we, we don't have a security in our job and our home. We're having struggles of health where these wicked vaccines are being made, made forced upon people with so much sick and so much sickness and death. We're in struggles in every aspect of our society and every aspect of our life. And these kinds of struggles have happened before in human history. And they will happen at their greatest, most serious and, and, and extent in the time of the Antichrist. We are not yet in that time of the Antichrist. We're in one of the times of persecution. And one of the tests is in the time of struggle, when I'm being attacked on all sides, what is the side that worries me the most? What is the side I'm most concerned about? And this is a little test. Lord, I'm still too worried about the material things. We're weak human creatures. I want to be worried more about the divine things. I want to be worried more about the love of God and the loss of the love of God than the love of things and the loss of the love of things. Our Lord did say he intended for us to have a house. He intended for us to have a bank account. He intended for us to have children and a family to live peaceably in society. That's what God wants for us. But there will be times when the enemies of God are going to try to take these things from us. And they're trying to try to disrupt them and, and, and disrupt our lives. Then we have to decide, what treasure is the one that I can't do without? What treasure is the one that I'd rather lose life than lose that treasure? And hence, the, the test is being made. What is the treasure? That, that I'm willing to sell all I have to buy and hide in the field. That, I, that I'm willing to lose all else but not that treasure. Because each one of us has some treasure that we're not willing to part with. We would rather lose life than that treasure. And we hope that treasure is the treasure of our faith, the treasure of the true church, the treasure of, 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 of faith, hope, and charity wrapped up together in the knowledge and love of God. Because this treasure does mean we'll see God face to face when we die. This treasure does mean we'll have eternal joys and eternal rewards. And that whatever little struggles we have in this life, they will not be that great, but to us they seem great. But whatever little struggles we have in this life, they're going to be replaced by an infinite joy in the next life. And furthermore, God will never let us suffer too much. He'll let us have struggles, but He always gives consolations. He always gives little helps. He always uh, supports us. And if we, as long as we seek first the kingdom of God and His justice, we will not be abandoned. The Lord did say, remember, as so many times we note, the lilies of the field neither sow nor reap nor gather into bonds, barns, but the Heavenly Father watches over each one of them. Are not you of much more value than they? And we are in a time now, we are beginning to see how the sins of the tongue and the sins against the faith, these sins are so much more serious than the fleshly sins. It is lies, it is wickedness, it is the hatred of God that has created the laws in which we find ourselves today. It is the worship of Satan and the sacrifice of Satan that made the abortion laws. It isn't just a matter of inconvenience. There are real priests of Satan who demand blood sacrifice to Satan. It is, it is the love of the devil and the hatred of God that makes him put aborted fetuses inside of various parts of our, of our, of our foods, in the vaccines, and elsewhere. It is the hatred of God that makes them do these things. It is the hatred of God that makes them make laws about divorce and laws about homosexuality and laws that constrict us in every way. 
little laws that make us become slaves in every part of our lives. These laws are not being done for our mistaken protection. They're being done for the purpose of furthering the kingdom of Satan and for the purpose of preparing for the kingdom of the Antichrist. This kingdom can only be combated by soldiers of the kingdom of God. And so we must understand, we're not fighting against corruption in the schools. We're not fighting against corruption in the government because there's a few guys want extra cash and a few guys are, are involved in some kind of corruption only because of money and pleasure. It is a much deeper combat. In the end, there are those who are the true followers of the devil and they want the treasure of the kingdom of Satan. And they want to see that kingdom spread and they want the world to be under the dominion of the devil. And on the other side, there are those who are fighting with the kingdom of God and the rights of God. And they are ready to, to die to, to, to preserve the rights of God. And we must ask the grace that we actually find ourselves when the real test comes as pursuers of the true kingdom of God. We're in the midst of one of these tests right now. Which of us shall survive? We don't know. God alone knows. But we must, be, we must beg the grace to be amongst those who are ready to give up everything rather than the treasure of the knowledge and love and hope in God, faith, hope, and charity, the treasure of sanctifying grace, the treasure of our Holy Roman Catholic faith, which is of greater value than all other treasures. And besides, all other treasures only come from the God who gave us faith, hope, and charity. They only come from the God who gave us our Holy Mother, the Church. The all treasures, the treasure of food, the treasure of health, the treasure of shelter, the treasure of the material things that we need, these treasures given to us are given by our Father who art in heaven. He's the one that gives us our daily bread. But let us first hallow his name. Let us first have the love of his name and, our, and the protection of his kingdom as the most important thing. Because it is being discovered more and more that there are many, many souls that are Catholics. Many, many souls that are conservatives and traditionalists who are making it abundantly clear that their first kingdom is the kingdom of themselves. And if that is the kingdom of Satan, it is not the kingdom of God. That their first love is the love of their own comfort and their own, their own, what they all, what they all desire, their own, their own, their own welfare. When our first love must be for the welfare of God and the spreading of the kingdom of God, and all other things shall be added unto us besides. And the things that disturb us should be more the attacks against God and His rights rather than the attacks against us, ourselves, and our own rights. So, I've asked the grace to persevere through this great crisis in which we find ourselves with the spirit of Christ and the spirit of the saints and not another spirit. So as it goes, God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.